Okay, so now that we know about numerical differentiation and integration of data, we're going to talk about how to integrate ordinary differential equations. Okay, so ODEs are an extremely important uh, part of applied mathematics where you get to describe how a system of, of quantities change in time uh, in relationship with each other. Okay, so what we're going to talk about ordinary differential equations. And usually we write this in the following way. So we write um, some vector x dot equals some function of x. And we also need to specify an initial condition, x at time 0 equals a vector x naught of initial conditions. Okay, so this is usually the uh, standard framing of an ordinary differential equation. And we're going to have uh, an example from population dynamics where x is a vector of um, populations. So the first component is going to be the number of bunnies, b. And the second uh, variable is going to be the number of wolves, w. And we're going to see that these two uh, populations, the number of bunnies, depends on how many wolves there are and how many bunnies there are. And the same thing with wolves. Okay, So this is a resource-constrained uh, population problem that we're going to look at later. But for now, let's just look at a generic uh, differential equation, x dot equals f of x. And again, what we're really interested in doing is approximating the solution of this differential equation, not by you know, solving it um, analytically with pencil and paper, but by trying to discretize the system so that we can step it forward in time on our computers uh, and simulate the answer. Okay. So the way we usually start this, uh, I'm just going to write a few things about this. We say x may be a vector of states, like in the example I just talked about. And we have f might be a nonlinear function. This f might be particularly nasty, a nonlinear function. OK, so it might be something like, um, might be something like a sine or a cosine or something even, even more complicated than that. OK, and what we're going to do here is essentially try to find some kind of an iteration so that if I give you x at time 0, you can define some iteration. I'm going to call this m, some map m, such that x0 goes to x1. And now that you have x1, we want to go to x2. And now that you have x2, we want to be able to go to x3, and so on and so forth, all the way up to xn. So what we would like to be able to do is if we know our state at time 0, at time naught, we'd like to be able to step it forward and get our system at time 1, time 2, and keep stepping them forward and forward and forward in time. Uh, and build up what's this is called a trajectory. Okay, so this sequence of states is called a trajectory in time. This is the time direction. And this is a trajectory. Okay, good. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at this x dot and we're going to look at our trusty uh, finite difference approximations to x dot. So what are some ways that we could approximate x dot? Well, if we used forward difference, we would say x dot is approximately equal to xk plus 1 minus xk divided by delta t. Okay, just xk plus 1 minus xk divided by delta t. And this is going to equal my function at xk. OK, so my time derivative, maybe one more thing I need to write here. My, my time derivative, x dot, at time k is approximately equal to this, um, this expression. OK, so we're looking at um, if we took the limit as delta t went to 0, this would be exactly my derivative, remember. But we're going to use a finite delta t. And this is approximately my derivative, x dot. And we know that x dot should equal f of x. So x dot at time k should equal f of x at time k. Good. OK, and so now we can actually unwrap this quantity and get a pretty simple expression. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by delta t, and I'm going to add x of k. So I get x k plus 1 equals x k plus delta t times f of x k. And this is a function. This is really, really important. So this means that if I have my state at time k, if I have x k here and here, and I know my function, and I know delta t, then I can compute this entire right-hand side, and I can get my function, my vector x at time k plus 1. So if I started with x naught, I can get x1. Then I plug x1 in here, and I get x2. And I plug x2 in here, and I get x3. And I step my system forward in time one delta t at a time. Okay, so this is a great iteration, and this will allow me to approximate the solution to my ordinary differential equation in time. This is called the forward Euler scheme. Uh, it's called forward Euler because we use the forward difference to get this. Okay, and there's an analogous backward Euler, so I could also say that x k dot is approximately equal to x. Um, well, let's use backward in the following way. Let's say that xk plus 1 dot is approximately equal to xk plus 1 minus xk divided by delta t. Okay, so this is the backward difference derivative at time step k plus 1. Just verify that that makes sense. And x dot at time k plus 1 should equal f of x at time k plus 1. So again, I'm going to multiply both sides by delta t, add delta x, and I get the following formula, xk plus 1 equals xk plus delta t, but now I have an f of xk plus 1. Okay, so this is another iteration. This is called backward or implicit Euler. And uh, I like to call it implicit. I think this makes more sense. Because notice that in this expression up here in forward Euler, it's a really simple direct algorithm. If you have x0, you can get x1. If you have x1, you can get x2, and so on. It's just you know, easy to evaluate this right-hand side and get the next step in the trajectory. But here, it's a little more difficult. If I have x0, I have this guy. but if I want to solve for xk plus 1, which is the next step in my trajectory, it's an implicit, uh, this is an implicit function of xk plus 1. And so it might be really difficult to actually solve for the xk plus 1 that makes this equal, uh, this, this satisfied. So although this is more accurate, it's oftentimes a lot more accurate and more stable, it's very difficult sometimes. But accuracy and uh, speed and stability count for a lot, so people oftentimes will use implicit algorithms instead of forward algorithms. OK, so the next thing that we're going to do is actually write down a specific differential equation for a population model. And we're going to try out this forward Euler integration scheme.